Welcome back guys to another one and hope everybody is safe. Uh, today let's finalize the Chromax Black series with the remaining U12S and the daddy of them all, the D15. And as you can see, just a quick shout out to Noctua for supplying me with this incredible comfortable hoodie from their new clothing lineup. And if you're interested, have a look on their website. This company needs little introduction. They are basically synonymous with best in slot build quality and overall noise air cooling performance. They refresh some of their most popular items with the new Chromas Black treatment and since we covered the low profile L9 series why not have a look at the remaining ones as well. Basically Noctua chose these three so you can have one from each category per se. Let's start with the NH-U12S which is a single tower 120mm cooler. Everything in the Chromax Black line gets a new box design which is of course with an all dark theme. Now this is how you pack, organize and present a product. Kudos to Noctua. I mean just take a look at the accessory box for example. On the top of it you have everything detailed so you know exactly what you are looking for or if you miss something. Overall the U12S measures 158mm in height and just 45mm in depth without a fan. It has 50 aluminium fins all held into place by 5 pieces of 6mm thick uh, all copper heat pipes. Then suffice to say that this new black coating looks just gorgeous. The fan is the same F12 PWM but in black which is rated up to 15000 RPM and roughly 55 cubic feet per minute of airflow. Then thanks to its advanced SSO bearings, this fan will last you over a decade of non-stop usage. Installation is a breeze thanks to their Secure Firm 2 mounting kit. Here it is when I installed it on a 2066 socket on an X79 motherboard and I specifically used RAM with all heat spreaders. If we start to measure stuff, we realize that the U12S can clear RAM up to 41mm tall. But because this is such a slim tower, you'll never get that close to the RAM slots on a full-size motherboard. Since this was the only footage I had of the installation process for the U12S, I just wanted to mention that after this I retested the U12S on our current system which is the AM4 socket and the results will come from there which of course I will show later. Ok, now let's move on to the beast which is the NHD15. It comes in one of the biggest boxes I have ever seen for an air cooler. Then we have the exact same design and packaging philosophy as we saw with the U12S and the L9. The D15 is perfectly nested and protected in the middle of the box with thick foam padding all around. Then here it is, this absolute unit of a cooler. My god, what a monster. But it's surprisingly not that heavy as you'd expect by just looking at it. It's just shy of 1 kilo without the fans. Now here is a size comparison and as you can see, even without the fans, it's over 3 times thicker than the U12S for example. It will measure 165mm tall with both fans attached, so make sure your case is big enough. Then with only one fan installed in the middle, in this configuration you have the maximum RAM height clearance since the last 7 out of those 45 aluminium fins per tower are reduced in height. But if you opt for beast mode aka with both fans attached then the D15 will have the following measurements at 165mm tall, 150mm wide and over 161mm long with a total weight of 1.3 kilos. Now we have 6 heat pipes which are also 6mm thick that support those two massive fin towers. As for the fans you get two NFA 15HS PWMs that have 120mm mounting holes which are also rated up to 1500 RPM. They develop over 82 CFM of airflow. They even have removable anti-vibration pads that you can also choose their own color from their Chromax range. Of course I will link everything in the description below. The installation process we have the exact same system, the Secure Firm 2 from the U12S. Only this time we will uh, use it on the AM4 socket. 
In here we just have to reuse the backplate that comes with any AM4 motherboard and then the rest is really easy. As I mentioned before, here is my up-to-date testing platform for this video, which we will test everything. It's an Asus Crosshair 6 on the X370 chipset, with 32 gigs of RAM, G-Skill Trident ZRGB Royale at 3000 MHz, with a Ryzen 7 2700 CPU. Of course, we will test it in stock form and then overclock it at 1.3 volts for exactly 4 GHz. Then I specifically installed a very large graphics card with that massive thick backplate to check the tolerances. So far, in all three directions, everything is perfect. The only heads up comes from the fourth perspective, which is the RAM area. Basically, when you install the second fan, if the heat spreaders on the memory modules are higher than 32mm, then you either put a fan like I did to stick out a bit, or just get smaller RAM kits. Or, of course, just uh, take one fan out. So yeah, just make sure you measure everything twice. Well then, with the presentation out of the way, let's see some graphs. As you can see, straight off the bat, the NHD15 Chromax Black beats even a 240 AIO and becomes our top dog in the charts. It will hold this position in all of the tests I did today, even in R20 and ADA64 stress test when it comes to temperatures. As you can see the pattern, this will make my conclusion a very easy and simple one. The D15 is the air cooling king because it delivers on all fronts. It beats everything that I had to test it against and it's even quieter and cheaper than a 240mm AIO, in this case the Kraken X53. Plus it's not that heavy as I expected given its colossus presence. The only heads up comes from that first tower that will interfere with taller RAM over 32mm like I mentioned before and in this scenario you can either use the second fan raised like I did or remove it altogether. Then you'll have the same performance as a regular D15S for example, which again is no problem. On the opposite spectrum, if you want to go all in, you can even add a third fan, if the VRM heat sinks allows you to do that. As for the U12S, it beats the Be Quiet Dark Slim 120 and becomes my new baseline for L cooling benchmark since a single tower 120 cooler is a popular option for any standard build. But it barely beats the Cooler Master 212, which is almost half the price, so the best buy award goes to the Cooler Master without any remorse. So, there you have it, guys. The D15 Chromas Black is the best air cooler that I've ever tested, and if you want the best, this is it. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, Alex out.